people, isn't it? Howdy, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It's your old pal, Purple Jiggly, the one and only. Uh, today is my favorite day. Today is eBay day. I ordered some stuff off eBay and it came today. Um, want to talk to you about Ryobi. Uh, the tool manufacturer from Japan. Uh, for a few years, they were in the fishing market, and they made darn good stuff. Um, I have a collection of old reels that I call the museum, and this is one of the pieces. And that glare is just terrible. Anyway. This is a Ryobi SLR-8 um, from the mid-80s. That's been in my collection for a while. The newest edition came via eBay today. What if I do that? <gasps> we might have just solved the problem. There we go, boys and girls. This is an SX2. Uh, Ryobi started uh, making fishing stuff in the 80s, uh, early 80s. And they sold off the fishing manufacturing in 2000 to uh, yes you are I assume is how you pronounce it and they make uh, Ryobic they, they, they added a C to the end of it but this is the first that I've actually got to play with this thing and uh, well I can tell that it's got something going on here oh my oh that's ugly Let's see if I can get that. You guys can see that. You guys see that? Now, I was assured by the eBay seller, of course, that this reel works fine. Um, I have my doubts now that I've seen the inside of it. But, uh, well, let's, let's give her a, a good look here. Now, when I buy an old reel, I buy it with every intention of using it, and I am going to use this thing. Uh, the Ryobi reels are very good, very sturdy, very well built. It's uh, Japanese steel through most of it. Oh, it seems to have just been tangled up underneath there. And I've about got it. Alright. Uh, you guys are uh, taking the maiden voyage with me. We're popping this thing's cherry together. Cherry poppin'. All right, and done. So basically, the line was just up underneath there, and then this thing here is a mess. I'll, I'll dig into that later. Well, the mechanism seems okay. Anti-reverse seems to work. Uh, so, basically, this can be switched left or right-handed. I reel with my left hand, like that. So I don't need to change anything there. It is bone dry in there, so I'm going to have to do some lubrication. And I felt something that felt loose. This side, I don't know if you guys can actually see that, but this side plate here, oh yeah, you guys can see that, is loose. So, somebody's been in it, basically. Um, I'm going to turn the camera off and, and do the boring stuff. Um, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Let me get over here in front of the light. Uh, basically, the boring bit was me rounding up tools. 
Um, we're going to tighten up the side plate, but I want to open it up to see what it looks like under there first. Big screwdriver into there. And I noticed that the other side of this handle seems to be spring-loaded. And I've not actually seen a reel like that before. So I'm not a thousand percent sure I know how to get it off. We're going to find out, though. But this is the basic method for uh, switching the handle from lefty to righty or whatever you need. And it's pretty standard across the reels. Make sure that little washer stays on there. You don't want to lose that. Okay. And then that just kind of pops off. And now we can open this to see what we might have going on in there. I regret being visually impaired because when I put my glasses on to record in here, the glare from these awful lights makes me look like an 80's cartoon villain All right, so we're going to take out these three screws oh this last one's barely even in now when you do this, you want the reel laying as flat as you can in your hand so that there's nowhere for the pieces, if there are any loose ones inside, to fall. Learned that one the hard way. So I've got my three screws. Now as always, as I take apart any reel, I have my parts laying here in the order in which I remove them so that I can look and go, oh hey, when I put it back together, that part goes next and it is still lubricated inside which is a surprise this is the panel that I just took off Let me get in front of that light for you there again and this is the inside and there's still a little bit of lube right there not much uh, while I've got it in my hands I'm going to roll this mechanism around just to watch the motion inside And it looks good. It looks exactly like it should. Now you can use a lot of things to lubricate a reel. And my jar of handy dandy reel lubricant seems to be gone. But you don't really want to use anything like a WD-40 because it won't stay. You need something thick. Uh, a 90 weight gear oil works good. Which I don't see mine. This is a lesson in being prepared, boys and girls. Listen to, your, to Uncle Jiggly here. Um, see, I knew I was going to tear this reel apart. But I wanted to do it on camera in front of you guys so that you guys could be just as surprised as I am as I discover the tangled line and etc, etc, etc. But if I'd been smart, I would have laid out all the tools that I needed and lubrication. That'll do. Now there's going to be some purists who are about to scream at their screens, but save it. This is petroleum jelly, Vaseline, whatever you want to call it. And it makes a good real lubricant because it is not water soluble. Being petroleum based, it can't be uh, dissolved or diluted with water. So if you get your real wet, ain't going to do nothing to this. So I am not using traditional real lubricant. I'm not even using gear oil. I'm putting Vaseline in it. 
and then as you roll the gears around it'll actually place itself where it needs to be just like that okay so lubrication is done now we're gonna put it back together now like I said I laid my pieces out here in the exact order in which I took them off let me move so I can turn the camera here Let's see if I can angle that so I can see what you guys are seeing yeah, good enough. Now my hand's in the damn way. Anyway, but this is the order in which I took everything apart. So that's the order in which I'm going to put it back together. So, this piece first. Heard that little click there, means I done it right. And again, you want to hold this as flat as possible while you do this. So anyway, back to uh, Ryobi as a company. Um, based on what I was able to find online, I know that the reel in my hand is no newer than the year 2000, so it's 20 years old. Because Ryobi stopped manufacturing fishing reels under the Ryobi name in 2000, sold their manufacturing to another company and they changed the name to Ryobic. Based on the style, I want to say that this is probably early to mid 90s. I don't have a way to know for sure, of course. Uh, the first reel that I showed you, the SLR8, I found an owner's manual online with a copyright date of 1985. So that tells me that that reel was made sometime in the 80s. The specific one that I have, they don't put manufacturer date codes and that kind of stuff on. So it's, it's kind of a shot in the dark guess. But due to the discolorization of the plastic, I'd say 80s is probably a fair guess. So, 80s, 90s. Um, I've got some other stuff coming from eBay. I was going to wait until it all came and do this all in one video, but I ramble and I talk a lot, and, well, you guys have been patient enough. I'm sure you got better things to do than to sit here and listen to me gib for an hour about crap from eBay. Now, you don't want to really tighten these screws down. You don't want to horse them. Just snug is good enough because it's old and if you strip out one of them screws seeing how this is from the 90s good luck getting a, another screw to fit alright so we still got a little bit of the petroleum jelly stuff on here you don't really need to do much lubrication in here but it, you know lube never hurts now the next piece that I took off was the handle, so it's going to go on next, and it snaps right in. I wonder what that actually turns for. Let me show you what I'm doing here. This piece right here, it turns, but I don't know why. It doesn't seem to do anything. Anyway. And then make sure the washer's there. The washer's important. Now, if as big as that screw head is, actually a, a penny or something like that would have worked. But I just happen to have this wide screwdriver sitting here. And it's doing the job. perfect. And again, you don't really want to horse it down to the point of no return. Just snug is good enough. Okay. Now that I've got back together, what does that do? Alright, viewers, the five or six over there are actually going to watch this. See what I'm doing here? It turns. 
and there's a little arrow on it that indicates that I should turn it, but I don't have a clue as to why. Let me see if I can get where you guys can see that little arrow. Right there, there's an arrow on it that says I'm supposed to turn it that way. It doesn't seem to do anything, though. Anyway, next will be the, uh, the reel. I'm going to stop the camera here because I'm going to take the line off of this before I put it back on. It's a, it's a tangled mess, as you can see. Howdy boys and girls, I don't know what happened. My phone started taking a whole bunch of pictures instead of recording video. So anyway, what I've done is I've spooled up some line here. We are going to use some basic 8 pound monofilament from Matsuo America. Boop. And then, since it's in a box, which is why I buy these particular ones that have the cutout on the corner, I don't need to do anything to it. I don't need one of them special little rice tools or anything like that. I could just leave it in the box and reel it in. I know this isn't the right kind of rod. It was just close. I'm not going to fish with this rod anyway. I've got something special planned for that. So anyway, we're going to put line on it. According to the side of the reel here, at 8 pounds, this will hold 200 yards. Anyway, so this might take a while, but it reels real nice, nice and smooth, I like it. No squeaking, no making noise. You know, not the stuff that you'd expect a 20-year-old reel to do. So, we'll come back. I really need to figure out lighting in here. I am so sorry, guys. Um, I don't know if the lighting in here irritates you guys like it does me. got to figure out something. Anyway, I'm going to do this and I'll be back. I'm back. Got it all filled up with line and I'm testing out all the functions. Right now I'm playing with the drag and what, is, what I've done is I've loosened the drag up a little bit and I'm basically just rolling the spool backwards. I'm doing a couple things. One, I'm testing to make sure that the drag works and I'm also reeling up the slack line that I left after I cut it. That seems to work beautifully. Tighten it back down. That works. Cool. This is the Silver Cloud SX2N. I don't know what any of that means. Um, I imagine that Silver Cloud must be uh, their branding. You know, like uh, Zebco 202, whatever. The bale seems a little tiny bit stiff, but I imagine after a few casts that'll, that'll straighten itself out. So anyway, I'm excited to use it. Tomorrow is supposed to be a good day. 10% chance of rain, but uh, Ohio weathermen are notorious for being wrong, so we'll play that by ear, and we'll see how it goes. Now, I will uh, continue doing research into this particular reel. I'm going to see if I can figure out with that 
arrow on the handles for. I tinkered with it when I was reeling the line and it doesn't actually seem to do anything but it's obvious it's there for a reason. So we'll take a look at that. Huh. There's something written on the uh, arm of the reel here. One touch. One touch. Okay. One touch. But what does it do? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I just figured out what it does. Okay. It's for uh, traveling and storage and whatnot. Roll that forward, and then you can collapse the handle in. That's what it does. Now, I don't have any use for that, but it is kind of cool. That's exactly what that's for. I'm smart. I figured something out. I need a cookie now. But uh, it's ready to go. When I go to use it for the first time, you guys will be there. I'll wear a camera or something. I don't know. I'll figure something out. And uh, we'll go from there. See you later, guys. Bye.